or uh, no, you got, you got people still joining, are you? We still have people coming in because we're early over here. Well, so. What did you want to talk about the app for a second? What's going on on the app? You have an app update? Yeah, well, yeah, I could just do that. A real quick app update at the, at the new Apocalypse Watch. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can uh, see if I got an app update. Pretty sure I do, right? Mm -hmm. Or am I? Uh, or am I struggling? You might be struggling. Am I struggling? I might need to look at my app. Yeah, you might have to look at yours. I might be struggling. I might have to. <laughs> I might. <laughs> I might need help. My app is on that phone. Oh my, come on. <laughs> Maybe I haven't signed in or something. Have Can you not signed in? I, if you if you look at your app yeah. and your uh, articles are gone, you have to re-sign in. Oh, you think that's, that's what I got to do? That's what's going on. So we get that question sometimes. They're like, I've looked at my app and all my articles are gone. What happened? It's because you have to re-sign so, in. Something happened and you have to... Sign out and sign in. Yep. So there you go. That's what happened. Okay. All right. So that could that could be the problem. So you can look at. Yeah, and there's some things going on in Jerusalem. I can't see that far. You have to read them today. In Jerusalem. All right. In East Jerusalem. Uh. Women's Day event oh, had a problem. At the instruction of the public security minister, the police dispersed an event on Monday in East Jerusalem in honor of International Women's Day. But the order was signed by Ohana claimed that the event was connected to, to the Palestinian Authority. But the event organizer said it had no connection to the Palestinian Authority. It was planned by the women in the neighborhood. So again, we always have this problem here trying to get uh, things going around in the East East Jerusalem. Uh, Did that affect uh, Rachel's tomb in any way? Because that's over in East, that's over in the East, uh, that's over in the West Bank. Mm -hmm. The social activist from the neighborhood said the center has no connection with the Palestinian Authority, that it operates a building that belongs to the local, local soccer team, and it's partially funded by a Swiss organization. They consider anything that isn't under the municipality illegal activity. So again, we have these things that are going on um, that we don't know for sure. How come women always have this deal with this oppression and confusion they're always the world's always in their way <laughs> the world is always in their way <laughs> the world's always in their way i mean is that, that well it is the world is always in yeah, our way that's what I'm saying. you are right but until you get to be deborah and jl uh or yeah as they would say in in hebrew uh Things get out of your way real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. get a tent peg and you just take care of the problem. You drive that stake through the guy's <laughs> temple and that's the end of that problem. <laughs> that's how you say that's how you get things out of your way real quick. So Okay. <laughs> so there you so go. So what's some of the headlines in Jerusalem there? <laughs> uh, Let's go to good news. A local church hits millionth meal donated to a local food bank. Uh, that's the Bethel Lutheran Church in Brush Prairie. They've been working for over seven years and they have reached their millionth meal through the Million Meals Donation Program. On Super Bowl Sunday, they actually did that. And that is, there you go. There's your uh, new apocalypsewatch.com. You can find good news like that. Is that actually, on our number five? That would be found on our number five. So if you get the app, all you gotta do then is just click on the, put your, hit the five mm -hmm. and it takes you to all the articles on good news. What else do you have going, Heidi? What else? What else do I have going? It, you can have all kinds of things. No, no, no. At hour number three, mm -hmm. the world news, the unclean spirits of the world news. <laughs> That's what we call it. Well, What's happening? Are the US special forces using armed robots? Hmm. 
There's a taboo about putting weapons on robots. When Dallas police killed a sniper using an improvised bomb on a robot in 2016, there was a national outcry. Tactic has not been repeated. The same ca caution has long been applied in the U.S. military. And any suggestion that robots will get weapons still draws a strong reaction. But special forces may have been quietly broken this long-standing taboo. Drone strikes against terrorists and insurgent leadership have become routine, although the policy of arming drones seems to have resulted from considerable pressure by the CIA in the face of Air Force resistance. When it comes to putting weapons on unmanned ground vehicles, the Pentagon has been more cautious. Um, but back in the 1980s, the experimental teleoperated mobile anti-armor platform was a 600-pound remote-controlled vehicle. The operator could maneuver its position and launch missiles at massed Soviet tanks from a safe distance. The TMAP worked well in demonstrations up to 1987, but Congress was not impressed and it deemed too small and underpowered, and the TMP never made it into service. You can read this and more information over here at the app. At the new Apocalypse Watch, and this is from the... Uh third hour and matter of fact i think how many uh, articles do you have at that third hour i do that's like a bunch 40 40, There's 40 articles, articles just on hour number three mm -hmm. uh is there anything else there that's kind of looming and it gets updated every day Mm -hmm. And Bart Begley does a great job with the updating. It tells you all about Myanmar protesters still trapped in late night standoffs. Uh, tells you about the virus in Brazil. Tells you about the military needs to be prepared to respond at all times. All kinds of things going on there in the app. So, yeah. Agent 2020 also does a great job researching this along with Bart Begley and others. And don't forget about the meteor on, on uh, hour number eight that exploded over Vermont. Yeah, that's in the eighth hour. And there's 14 articles that have to do with wormwood, asteroids, meteorites, Nibiru. And this one that exploded over Vermont, Heidi, was insane. Okay, and what else? A rare meteorite that fell on the UK driveway may contain ingredients of life. That's pretty cool. What's that about? fireball that lit up the sky over the UK and Northern Europe on February 28th had, was an extremely rare type of meteorite. Fragments of the space rock discovered on a driveway in the Cotswold could provide answers to questions about the early history of the solar system and life on Earth. Almost 300 grams of the meteorite have been collected from a small Gloucestershire town of Wintcombe by scientists who said the rock was formed of carbonaceous chondrite. The substance is some of the pr most primitive and pristine material in the solar system and has been known to contain organic material and amino acids, the ingredients for life. The Natural Histo History Museum in London said the fragments were retrieved in such good condition and so quickly after the meteorites fall that they are comparable to rock samples returned from space missions, both in quality and quantity. That is really, really cool. So that's one of the, another one of the articles that's on the Apocalypse Watch. Check it out besides all these 150 plus every day articles that are posted. Yeah, let all these oh people in. What? Sorry. Let all these people in. <laughs> okay, they're starting to join us everywhere out there. <laughs> uh, Cindy Wolverton. Uh, hey, how's it going? David Reed. Uh, Howard Farley. David uh, Reed. Howard Farley. Somebody's got their windows open. Somebody's got their windows open. Echo, echo, echo. All right, Heidi. 
Okay. Anyway, there's 709 people seeing my death are at YouTube, and we got a bunch of folks gathering over at on Zoom. All right. For more waiting. All right. Cool. Okay. This pastor. Brock Begley's also uh, recording this, uh, and then he'll be uploading this after we're done with all the graphics uh, that will go along with this broadcast. So that'd be cool. I see Shelly Whelan is here and she's one of our teachers as well. Yeah, and uh, who's, who's, let's see, what night does she teach? Is she Wednesday? I don't know if she's Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Mark Wolverton's here, I see him. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So Wendy's here. All right, Heidi. All right. Just does uh, Pastor Wolverton want to lead us in prayer tonight? Be great. Have to unmute himself. He's muted. Am I unmuted now? There you are. There you are. All right. Praise the Lord. My mouse wanted to be a cat. <laughs> Well, Father, we just come before you now in the name of Jesus. We pray that, that uh, you would uh, work with the airwaves tonight. May you just bless and pour in. May you anoint the Begley's from on high as we speak about Daniel chapter 5. Don't drink the wine, especially with a bad cup. Thank you, Jesus, or a good, good cup. It's a good cup. But Lord, bless each of ones that's listening. May they be, uh, be touched as we share the word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we see Jerry here tonight as well. Jerry was at the service Sunday, so it was good to finally get to meet Jerry. That was really cool. We had a great lunch after church, and he was uh, there along with uh, Wendy. Wendy, mm -hmm. And uh, they drove a long way to be at uh, church Sunday morning, so it was really cool. Plus some other folks drove in. Well, we had a lot of people from the, our online church families getting to meet us here in Florida, so that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, some drove in from over near the uh, Daytona Beach. Some came out of Tampa. Mm -hmm. Wendy came out of Naples. Naples. That's a three-hour drive. And there were some other folks. So it's really cool. Good to see everybody out there. Heidi, what do you got for us? Daniel 5? Daniel 5. Oh, you want my Bible to read? <laughs> so how far you want me to start in? You 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 know what to do. Uh oh, what's going on? I think the Bible touched the screen. The Bible touched the screen. What does that mean? It means it threw everything into a, when the word of God gets involved, <laughs> it can throw man system into a <laughs> into uh, something like that because it put everybody over here on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you are viewing uh, somebody else's screen at this moment, mm -hmm. Lynn's screen, which I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, something's, now let's click on that thing right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that looks better. Put, yep. All right, Heidi. You're going to have to admit people if I'm going to read. I'll watch the admit. I can do admissions. <laughs> okay. I'll work in administration. All right. All right. Go ahead. So Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast. Now, who's Belshazzar? He's the king of the uh, Babylonian Empire. Right. And he is, well, okay, so let's, let's just back up a minute. So in Daniel 1, 2, 3, and 4, right, we were talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Right. And so what what happened with Nebuchadnezzar? Well, let's remember that Nebuchadnezzar is involved with the taking down of the uh, first temple. He went in, he desecrated the first temple. He stole all the golden uh, vessels and artifacts out of the temple, desecrated it, and then took the Jewish people and took them away captive uh, into his Babylonian kingdom. So... Uh, he was a very proud man, and uh, that's a shofar. The, the rapture is very near, and, and so anyway, um, and so you know he did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Then um, he built an image to himself, 
because of the dream that he had that Daniel interpreted it. Hey, you're the golden head on the statue. You're the king over all the earth. Nobody's like you. And God blessed you to have this position, but he was more into his own self glory. So he makes this beast uh, image of himself. Mm -hmm. uh, God humbles him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, the, and the three Hebrew children won't bow down. They won't bow to his image. He throws them into the fiery furnace, but they won't bow. And God delivers them. Jesus is literally the son of God is inside the fire. Mm -hmm. Some would say it was an angel. Some would say it was Jesus Christ himself. Certainly the Lord re re came in. And then God humbles Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, for seven years, he lives outside in the field eating the grass like a cattle and like a beast and, and his hair grows and his fingernails grow and he's just a wild man. And then after those seven years, God restores his mind, brings him back in, says, now, now do you understand that you're nobody unless I put you there? This is a great story for all presidents, kings, anyone else that's in charge of any nation, known leader of any nation got there except God let them be there. Well, okay, any leadership position, period. Period. Thank you. Needs to take a look. See. So, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, so that was, and after that experience, he said, look, from now on, we're only going to worship the God of Daniel. That is the true and living God. Mm -hmm. But his kingdom comes to an end. He dies at the end of chapter four here. We know that his kingdom comes to an end. And we have a new king, his son, Belshazzar. There we go. And so that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Belshazzar. All right. Belshazzar. Okay. So Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels, which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, which you just explained to us. Yes. That the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, the house of God, capital mm -hmm. G, yeah. which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. So they brought out the vessels and then they poured the wine in them and then they drank in them. They drank wine and praised, little g, gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. So they brought the vessels out, they poured the wine in them, and then they praised, wow, then they praised their gods of of gold and silver, silver and what wood and uh where'd it go brass and iron and precious stones yes here's the point here heidi that's pretty it bad it wasn't isn't it? the wine that god was angry about because they drank the wine and banquets every night that's that's not the problem the problem was going and getting god's vessels and deciding you're going to hold a party at God's expense and worship the idol gods. That was the, that, okay, people do things wrong all the time mm -hmm. and you can find grace and forgiveness. But when you blaspheme God and, and his holy temple and his vessels, you know, when you, st that's when you cross the line. So those vessels are sanctified. Sanctified, they're which sacred. Which means they're set apart. Yes. So they're only to be used for the, for the holy. Right, the worship of the Lord and only worship. the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part. Yep. They're set apart, sanctified. Yes. They're not to be used for anything else. So that's the first part. That's huge. So they've been taken out to be used for however they want to be used so then they then they're not only taken out of the uh, their holy environment but then they're used to be worshipped for idol gods. idol gods now remember the first commandment God said was thou shalt have no other gods before me mm -hmm. so when you take his holy vessels that he's blessed and sanctified and you decide to use them to worship other gods, you're you're committing a blasphemous act, and you know that's going too far. Um, look, as I said, these vessels had been there all, for all this time under the first king, and let's uh, there's four kings that end up being over Babylon during the seventy years that the 
uh, is, is Jewish people are in captivity. So, so I'm not sure how many years Nebuchadnezzar was there, at least seven, because he was out there eating grass for seven years of it. But he, during his entire kingdom reign, he did a lot of stuff like throw people into the, you know, uh, fiery furnace. And, you know, he did all kinds of stuff. And those vessels, he stole those vessels from the house of God. He even desecrated the house of God. Mm -hmm. And he took the children of Israel into captivity and God allowed him to do all of that mm -hmm. and did not. And he and still didn't do anything to it for that, except when he stole the glory and said, I built this kingdom. Mm -hmm. That was the sin that God said, oh, no, 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 no. I let you get away with a lot of stuff, but nobody steals God's glory. Mm -hmm. Remember the king who was eat from the inside out and mm -hmm. worms in the book of Acts? Okay. King Agrippa. Mm -hmm. So that was the sin, Heidi, of, of uh, blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And what happens now? His son's in charge. What does the son do? Oops. Like I said, they were having a party every uh, kings and, and I mean, they're, they're celebrating. They're eating the meal, drinking the wine. They did this every night. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. But when they went and got the God's vessels and used them to worship idol gods, that's the the uh, spiritual adultery, and God will not tolerate. Do you want to know something about Islam? You cannot create a new religion and take God's glory from Him and share it with some other God. That God will bring you down. Okay, it's blasphemy, mm -hmm. and the beast kingdom of the last days will do just that: build an image to Himself and blaspheme the God of Heaven. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't want to get too far into this. I just. Well, you're right there. So, number five. In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand. What? And wrote against a candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. That would kind of freak you out, wouldn't it? Be kind of like the fingers. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed Duh. and his knees smote one against another. This man was this scared. This dude was scared. I mean, okay. <laughs> and the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers. Why do they always ask for the astrologers first? They always go get those stargazers, okay, and those crystal ball gazers and, say, and tarot card readers. And what is the problem here? The, okay. the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. I'm not sure who's the second ruler. <laughs> well, maybe the queen. The third, oh, that could okay, be. Okay, you got okay. the king, the queen, and then Daniel. <laughs> I mean, right. he's getting a high position mm -hmm. here, not like the secretary of state here in America or speaker of the house even. Mm -hmm. Then came in all the king's wise men. Sugar, stop. Uh oh. Uh oh. I got a question. Who's got a What name? is a soothsayer? What's a soothsayer? Who's there, Heidi? It's like a fortune teller. Like a psychic. Like a psychic? Yeah. Yep. A fortune teller. Someone who looks into the future without God's anointing. Okay? Like, oh, okay. Yep. Okay, so, and the king spake, okay, and uh, we already said that. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, there's number two, I guess, number like two. you said, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in the kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. 
Rochelle. She remembered that he was the one who could interpret the dreams better than any of the soothsayers and astrologers, remember? Mm -hmm. and, they, and they said that he had the wisdom of the holy gods in him. That's the way they put it. Yeah. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts. How about that? Dissolving of doubts. Yeah, man of faith. Were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. And now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Then was Dan sugars, sugars being a problem. <laughs> I think she wants to eat a little can of food. Then was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel, art thou Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father brought out of Jewry. So isn't that interesting though, that Belshazzar did not even, isn't that interesting that he didn't seem to know the, the story of Daniel, but his, but his wife did, the queen did. Mm -hmm. I wonder what, what he was doing during all this time. You know, he's probably a little spoiled brat running around in the kingdom <laughs> uh, that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, was running. Okay. And he wasn't, again, he didn't study his history. Mm -hmm. He forgot about what his daddy said about we're only going to worship. Well, it's getting ready to tell you, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, you know. Before we get ready to go off on him, let's let's read 14. I want to go off on his kids so bad, but go ahead. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, but maybe he's saying from his queen, and that light and wisdom, understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So here we go with the understanding of, of writing, understanding now before he could understand the dreams, right? Here he needs to be able to understand uh, ancient writing. Uh, you would maybe call this a myst mystical writing, I guess. Yeah, obviously it's a spiritual writing, right? It's just depending on which side you're on or whose spirit, <laughs> right? That's pretty big. Yes, we're going to know it's it's God's spirit, but it's going to be made known to uh, King Belshazzar whose God it is, right? Yep. And uh, and Daniel will be able to know. But see, again, here you are in the midst. <laughs> Daniel is, but we all need to take notice of this uh, because we could be found at any moment in the midst of a captivity of a, of an evil kingdom. And we need to be able to have these kinds of tools of discernment of being able to interpret dreams of being able to interpret in this case, Hebrew, um, you know? Yeah. We, we better not just rely on Google. Mm -hmm. We might want to rely on God and more than just, just that or not, or not more than, but at, in conjunction with that, mm -hmm. uh, I think the church is looking for a, if we're not careful, we're going to trust more in AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. instead of supernatural intelligence, mm -hmm. SI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need the gifts of the spirit mm -hmm. to help us discern but we also need some people to actually study the ancient writings and the and the ancient languages, which is what God has called you to do, and you've been doing. I've been trying. Well, no, folks, <laughs> I've been trying very hard. She's so she's so <laughs> humble and gives herself. She's so hard on herself. I just watched her decipher a three thousand year old writing on a clay um, shard. By Nebuchadnezzar, it wasn't. But what wasn't, wasn't by Nebuchadnezzar it was by. It was in his era. It was during this time in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They found a clay shard over in the Kuram area, wasn't it? No, it was in Samaria. A Samaria. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And it had inscriptions on it. And Heidi 
in her class was able to decipher the writing because it was in what language? Paleo Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew. Mm -hmm. That's why she's been studying these things because we're so somebody's got to be able to understand the writing, the language, but also we got to understand how to in discern through the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. We have to notice Daniel not only could read the writing, he could, he had the spirit of the most holy God to discern what it meant. Interpret it. Yes. Ancient writing of the hand of God. Mm -hmm. He could interpret it and read it. I mean, think about that. And think about that though. If you find yourself in the midst of, you know, a captivity and okay. that you've been elevated to the point that you, they know that you have something different than everybody else. You have the spirit of the holy God. And they know you them. have it. You have it in you. And you are the one who can interpret your way out of something, whether it's by the spirit of discernment, whether it's by you're able to read something that has come up or whether you're able to interpret a dream that somebody has because you're able to interpret, you know, discern it or whatever. You're able to pray and maybe God gives you the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that. I mean, he, the, the, the first time he had to pray and find out what the dream even was. The king wouldn't even tell him what yeah. the dream was. And he could tell the king the dream that was Nebuchadnezzar and right. the meaning. Right. Heidi, when the beast kingdom mm -hmm. as the beast kingdom oppresses the body of Christ, mm -hmm. They're still, they still know we have the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. They fear it. Mm -hmm. The new world order, the, the global elitist and the global players right now who are really anti-atheist, mm -hmm. they fear us. Mm -hmm. They fear you. They fear the church because they know, they know you have supernatural power and understanding that they don't have. You have intelligence not artificial intelligence, but supernatural intelligence. And they're afraid of you because they know you know. You can discern, you get spiritual intel that gives you directions where to go. How many people have been persecuted in the last 2000 years in Christianity? God would lead them out, show them another path to get out of a, a situation mm -hmm. because somebody in the group had the anointing was the walking in the closeness of God and, and could receive that. Well, that's very relevant in uh, war, actually. Um, we heard that story of um, actually the our sweet sister who's went on to be with the Lord. Her husband said that he was leading uh, oil tankers out um, and uh, he was told by the Holy Spirit, don't go this don't way. Don't go this way. Go this other way. And um, sure enough, there were IEDs along Even that though path. the intel that he mm -hmm. was given by the U.S. government was to lead him this way, to the right. Mm -hmm. When he got to the fork in the road, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit said, you go the left. And he, in all indications was the left is where the enemy was. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. intel was go right. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit said, lead these guys to the left. And he did. And he led them through safely. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were waiting on the on the other road. And they did kill some other uh, soldiers right. who took the road they were supposed to take. So he disobeyed an order to, mm -hmm. he had supernatural intel. Right, supernatural intel. And you know. Uh, and I'm sure he's not the only one with no, those matter stories. Fact, our, one mm -hmm. of our online church members, John Ward, mm -hmm. who has been. I think he told me 30 some in deployments. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, um, told me, you know, numerous times that he would pray and the, and the Lord would tell him where to take the men, where to go and to avoid the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, when he was in uh, Afghanistan mm -hmm. numerous times. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, which would you rather have artificial intelligence or supernatural intelligence in these last days. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we got to keep going here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, where did we leave off at? Well, you have Daniel in the, coming in to interpret the writing. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. I think we're at the 17th. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, 
let thy gifts be to thyself. It's like, uh, do I really need your gifts? And give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would, whom he would slew, and whom he would, would he kept, kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with, with the wild asses, and they fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou knew all this. Yep. You saw all of this happen you to it. your dad. You, you saw that God gave him everything. You saw that he was the ruler over every person. Mm -hmm. uh, animal and plant remember we went through all of that and yet he was lifted up with pride and he lost everything you saw all that happened to your father yet here you are you've not humbled your heart though you knew all of this but you but hast lifted up thyself against the lord of heaven and thou hast brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the gods of silver, small g, gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the god, big g, the god in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are thy all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Heidi, secret societies, global elitists, luciferians are doing the exact same thing right now mm -hmm. they know they better. know better they, they know, know we better. got the power mm -hmm. and they are trusting lucifer they are mm -hmm. worshiping they're blaspheming and they're literally calling on spirit cooking mm -hmm. they're doing everything they can to try to defeat the kingdom of god mm -hmm. and they they know better mm -hmm. but they still think they are going to win they don't have to submit to the God of glory. Hmm. We're seeing a replay right now, and there will be a replay exactly the same way. It's coming. Then was a part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekla, you farsen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Peres, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with scarlet. Now you would think he would be so mad over this, over this interpretation, wouldn't you? I mean, he just got done saying, your, your kingdom's, your kingdom's done, finished. it's divided. It's done. But no, no, he went ahead and finished out what he said he would do with Daniel. Then commanded Belshazzar and he clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans slain and Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. 62 years old. That very night, the very night that this man blasphemed against God mm -hmm. with the holy vessels, mm -hmm. his kingdom was found wanting. It was finished. It was divided. It was over. Mm -hmm. uh, and the prophecy on the wall came to pass that night. And mm -hmm. Daniel prophetically delivered that word mm -hmm. and you know nobody wants to bring forth a word that is painful mm -hmm. okay and, you know daniel had to do that 
the first time with Nebuchadnezzar. And then he has to do it the next time with Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, but he does it anyway. It's like, look, I don't, you know, I'm just going to tell you the way it is. This is the prophecy. You don't, you don't like it, but it's the way it is. And Jeremiah did the same thing in his day. And he was known as the weeping prophet mm -hmm. because he told the children of Israel exactly what was going to happen uh, because of their sins, because of their turning away from the law of God, that this was going to bring about upon them disaster. Mm -hmm. It looks like you have some information here to show us on the handwriting on the wall. Just a little bit. Is it sharing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're sharing. So this is Rembrandt. Rembrandt um, grew up in the Jewish quarter in Amsterdam. And if you would look who knew? But did you learn this in school, by the way? No. Did anybody tell you that Rembrandt, in many of his pictures, included some Hebrew? No, nobody told me about that. So if you will look in, in uh, Rembrandt's, this is uh, Belshazzar's Feast, I think is the name of his uh, picture. I didn't even get this in Sunday school. You didn't? No. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't go to Sunday school. <laughs> I did, and I still didn't get it, okay? <laughs> Uh, but um, but this is called Belshazzar's Feast, and it's Rembrandt. He's just a masterpiece, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> he captures this quite ex extraordinary there. Um, yes. Look at the expression of the king and everybody there. So everybody has an idea. Why did Rembrandt? Uh, so Hebrew would be written this way, right? But it's not. That's not how he wrote it. He wrote it this way. There's a mem, oh. noon, there's meaning. He wrote it. Mem, noon, and He wrote it backwards. Aleph. No, Good. he wrote it. Uh, Correct. No. <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote it this way. It was cryptic. Um, so some people say, was that Kabbalah? I don't know. I think he wrote it because it's cryptic. It's a cryptic handwriting on the wall. Okay. Everybody has their idea why he wrote it wrong. <laughs> So he wrote it from top down. Oh, vertical. He wrote it vertical. Yeah. Instead of this way. Yeah, it should he, be written that way. Like this, from right to left, if Hebrew. it's truly Hebrew. It is Hebrew. Uh, it is Hebrew. But, but it, he writes it from a top vertical, down. top to bottom. So it's mini. So it's yeah. M-N-A. Yeah. So M-N-A, mini, mini. And then there's your tekla. It's a T-Q-L. Okay. All right, and then there's a you, you, you farson. Okay, so that's a, that's a like a V. That's a Bob, and that's a. So it's a F, R, S, as a Y, as a Yud, and a, and a Noon. Okay. So, so he writes it like that. So it is in Hebrew, but he <laughs> writes it in a code. Yeah. Not too hard. So top to bottom vertical. And there's, of course, the hand. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there's the hand. Very interesting, huh? Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And, of course, beautiful, beautiful work. Um, he grew up in the Jewish Quarter in Amsterdam. I believe they said that this painting is currently in London Museum, I believe. Um, but anyways, there are the Strong's um, references that if you want to look it up. And there's how it is in Hebrew the right way. Now, why is it um, this way in the first, ver I forget exactly what verse, I didn't put the verse that it's in, but in one, in the, let's see, 25th verse, it's Epharsin, and then in the uh, which verse, 28th verse, when he's interpreting to you, he writes it this way. This is actually the root of the word. So that's that's the difference. So the root of the word is is the um, the F, the R, and the S. Okay. So that's the root of the word. That's the only difference. Okay. So. But it's Paleo Hebrew. No, it's not. No, I mean, I mean that's what mm -hmm. you, you've been learning, mm -hmm. but this is just written in Hebrew. That's regular Hebrew. But yes. coded mm -hmm. because he does it, you know, he writes it vertical instead of. He wrote of, it vertical, yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very. But you could read it because mm -hmm. you know the letters and. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's really neat. I, I, I find it fascinating that uh, Rembrandt was uh, so up 
on his biblical information. This is Old Testament, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And this story is an Old Testament story with the Jews being in oppression mm -hmm. and God's getting ready to showing God, showing them that he was still there mm -hmm. and that though they were still captive, God was still in control. That's what I want to say right now. Right now, there's some Christians who have almost lost their faith because mm -hmm. things didn't work out the way that they really, really wanted. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. God is still in control. He hasn't lost one ounce of power, and I'm still in the kingdom. <laughs> okay, you're still in the kingdom. I'm still in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. No matter who's sitting on the, the little throne down here, who's on the big throne? Mm -hmm. and who's really in charge? Who still can write the handwriting on the wall? Who can still make kings eat grass like animals? Mm -hmm. Who do you serve? Mm -hmm. Man or God? I think I'll stay with God. Mm -hmm. okay. but it, and then also, it's very similar to Joseph. He was uh, also in the midst of, you know, uh, captivity. And he also knew how to interpret dreams. And that's what got him out of the prison. Elevated him all the way to, to the, at one point, he was the governor of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to say something. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You don't have to just survive. You can thrive. Mm -hmm. And when you have God's blessing on you, I don't care what the economy is doing. I don't care what the stock market is doing. I don't care what nothing's doing. You will still be blessed if you believe that. Now, if you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. Okay. So what was the economic situation in Joseph's situation? A famine, a seven year famine, the worst the world ever had. Mm -hmm. And Joseph become a multi billionaire. It was a great reset. It was a totally a great reset. Mm -hmm. He became a billionaire from the prison, from the pit to the prison to the palace, uh, 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 held captive in a strange land. Mm -hmm. He got supernatural intel, mm -hmm. SI, instead mm -hmm. of. AI, mm -hmm. or even Pharaoh I, FI, okay, or PI. He had super intelligence. Supernatural intel. Supernatural intel. For how to survive and thrive. Survive, thrive, and have the survival mechanism for all of those around. Both friend and foe. Mm -hmm. He didn't just save Egypt, he saved mm -hmm. his, his father's house and all of his servants he saved the other nations yes that were all starving they know that they knew they could come to egypt mm -hmm. and trade things of wealth which a lot of it was gold silver and precious stones and jewels mm -hmm. for food right and so that's why egypt became so wealthy talk about cryptocurrency yeah <laughs> because you know Things were all the currency w would change at that point when you were in the middle of a famine. Yeah, all of the currency ended up being different. Yeah. So, and God knows what the intention is. Mm -hmm. Joseph never did it for his own personal gain. Mm -hmm. He did it for the d survival of the of the Pharaoh and the and the world. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are greedy. Mm -hmm. who want supernatural information on how they can make wealth. Mm -hmm. God doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. He it's he's the, this is why you have to know the Bible. Mm -hmm. He said it's in my power mm -hmm. to give you wealth mm -hmm. to establish the covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not it's my power to give you wealth to establish the covenant of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? All witty inventions come down from the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's the giver of witty inventions. There's a scripture like that. Right. Now, anything you put your hand to, it'll prosper. If you're already giving uh, and you're, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Some people get mad, but it's Malachi chapter three. I'm just telling you, if you're a tither and you're faithful and you're a responsible Christian and you, you know, you have your home church, you have your online church, whatever that is, that you're, this is what, what where you're getting fed from the Lord. God will put on your heart to, to, Walk in obedience financially. When you do, you will be blessed. It doesn't matter what, come hell or high water, you will be blessed. And um, now supernatural blessings beyond that comes from establishing, being willing, let's say, to help establish God's kingdom.
God will bless you just because you're doing his work. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. And, and unfortunately the world don't understand this thought of economics. No, and the world doesn't understand being stuck in the middle of a, of a pit. Um, well, when your brothers have all, you know, walked away from you and told everybody you died, you know, and then you end up. He forgave them. Yeah. That's why he was blessed because he could <laughs> forgive. Oh, um, that's huge. That you is can't huge. be blessed if you your can't. Your attitude is huge. Look, if you can't forgive your brother. Your attitude and how you handle you, a situation. If you don't love your brother whom you can see. Yeah. How can you love God who you can't see? Right. So if you go around with a grudge on your heart and mm -hmm. a chip on your shoulder, mm -hmm. don't expect God to bless you. Yeah. Your attitude Make and how right. you handle things, even though it's not fair. Um, how many times have I had to call someone mm -hmm. or, and, and say, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for something I never did, mm -hmm. knowing they did it to me. But the scripture says. But I did it anyway. And this, because the scripture says. To make make things right, leave your gift at the altar mm -hmm. and make it right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's been like, really, God, mm -hmm. you really want me to do this? You know mm -hmm. that this person's just completely trashing me, <laughs> and he'll say, just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'll and I'll call and I'll say. You know, if there's something I did wrong, I'm really sorry. I love you, brother or sister, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Knowing the truth was it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. But that God doesn't care. He wants to know, is your heart, you know, are you willing to take the hit? For the, for the gospel. Are you willing On February 5th and 6th, 2021, we gathered doctors, scientists, investigative journalists, military intelligence experts, and Bible scholars for one of the most important webinars of our time, The Virus, Vaccines, Victims, and Victory. We examined the vulnerabilities of the population and explored the verifiable evidence of what's really going on. You can see all these discussions in a DVD set called The Virus, Vaccines, Victims, and Victory. Get it today at Paul Bakley prophecy.com it's when you don't is when it's rough <laughs> Heidi what about wait, wait we're not done with the story what, what happens here no well we just said Darius and the median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old and then we come to chapter six and next <laughs> so that'll be uh, when we go to that next mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. we'll find out who Darius is mm -hmm. he's the third king of the four kings of the book of Daniel mm -hmm. very important because we're going to get to Cyrus mm -hmm. and we know what he does okay mm -hmm. uh, so anyway there's some really good stuff Darius is amazing mm -hmm. so um, so Heidi, I mean it, it's all down to spiritual understanding spiritual worship obedience isn't it uh, it comes to thriving in the midst of um, in the midst of adversity. Also, we can't be lifted up in pride. Obviously. Okay. And we and don't mock God. Mm -hmm. If a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mock God, the Bible says, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be doing that. Uh, you don't be trying to take the glory from God. That'll never work. Mm -hmm. So we got to we got to keep things in perspective, don't we? Mm -hmm. What do you Sister Heidi, actually, I got two comments, not comments, but two things I want to say about what you, well, what you just got finished reading about uh, um, being not touching God's things. One thing, uh, Hezekiah is one good example. The king came from Assyria, and he and he surrounded Jerusalem, and he started blaspheming God in front of everybody, including the king. Well, God sent an angel just just wiped out his army, and he's and the king went back, and his I think it was his sons that rose against. Him, I think number two, I'm reading. I'm about getting really close to the book of Joshua. Now, uh, God told the children of Israel, "Go, do not touch anything out, or don't take anything out of uh, Jericho." Somebody took something. God told him not to, but uh, he did it anyway. So when they went into battle, they lost because that individual did not obey what God told them not to do. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen uh, people come do the complete opposite for what God was uh, always tell us not to do? 
Maybe, maybe I might have done that. Uh, it's happened to me a couple <laughs> times, and uh, you'll get yourself in trouble if you do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I also know what you're talking about, Brother Paul, because a few years ago I moved in Tribeca Towers, and um, why well, a lot of people started accusing me of things and, and blaming me for things that I didn't do. So, well, I had a I, for every ever since that happened, God started bringing things back. From what the people of the Bible experienced, I experienced a little of that. Now, there's one person I had a hard time forgiving, which was the manager of the building. And I, I thought I'd forgiven him. God was really working on me on that one. I had, it took me several times to get that out of my system. <laughs> <laughs> well, when God goes to working on us, uh, you know, he'll finish it off. I mean, we're, 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 you can you can go the easy way or you can go the hard way. Amen. Go the God's way, okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Shout out to Pastor Leo. Pastor Leo Dempsey, <laughs> way up there in North Dakota, just dropped in over at YouTube and say, keep the faith, Pastor Leo. Keep the faith. I love hearing him. The other day, we was listening to him preach a little bit uh, up there. He was standing outside, outside his car in the cold, and he was uh, just preaching a little on Facebook, I think it was. And, uh, such a blessing. So God bless you, Pastor. What, somebody else got a question? I have a question. Okay. In uh, Daniel 5, verse 20, it, it talks about when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened to pride, he was to, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Mm. What, what, what do you suppose the glory is? Yo. That's such a, I mean, could it be his staff, his crown, his robe, or something else, maybe? Well, they're talking about Nebuchadnezzar at, at that point. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was, he was given everything, you know. So he was a king and he was given everything, so. His authority? I mean, mm -hmm. he surrendered it, didn't he? I mean, he lost his mind. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that God can put in place who he wants to and can take out who he wants to? Oh, absolutely. He says it in this chapter, in, in the book of Daniel. Absolutely. You're right. Absolutely. And he will. And that's why we're not to question God. And we're always to realize that God's in control. No matter who sits on the little thrones, God's on the big throne, you know? Good question. Brother Paul, I've got a question for you. Uh oh. This morning yeah. I was reading uh, Matthew chapter 24, as I always do. And you know that scripture where uh, Jesus said, uh, God, will, the days will be shortened? Well, uh, that brought to my attention about the asteroids. I was wondering if that verse is, uh, has anything to do with the book of Revelation when it says, when two deep impacts about the asteroids. I was wondering, is that the same thing or am I missing it there? Well, no, I mean, obviously the two deep impacts is going to happen. Okay, that's good. that's Revelation chapter 8. Uh -huh. And it includes wormwood in the second impact. But in Matthew 24, it does say, Jesus does say, but because um, God would have to shorten the days for the elect's sake, at least there no flesh be saved. And he says it also in Mark 13. And why is this so important? In other words, I don't know if he's going to use an asteroid or if he's going to use war or disease or exactly how God's going to do it, but he will end time shorter than he was a planning to due to man's sin, due to man's unbelief, due to our wickedness and exactly what the mechanism is he uses. I'm not sure. You know, it, it, he's out there. God's looking at every asteroid that's out there. He can fling one our way anytime he wants to. And he can bring this thing to the end shorter than he was originally going to. And he's going to do this by some mechanism. I just, you know, I don't know exactly which one, but he is going to shorten the days. I was reading the same scripture myself earlier this week, and, and it was very important to me. He just, the Lord even was talking to me about it and said, you need to, you need to let people know I'm coming sooner than I originally said. And this was the word I got, Heidi. I'm not tearing my coming. 
I'm, I'm hastening sooner. I'm not going to tarry my coming. Mm. I'm coming faster than I thought it would mm -hmm. because, because of our disobedience mm -hmm. as a, as a humanity I'm talking about. I like that brother. Paul actually, me and you got the same, got the same idea. I really like that brother. We're, 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 we're connected to the same power source. I think brother. Amen. Brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Someone else out there. Pastor, can you hear me? Yeah. Pastor Don, how you doing? Hey, Pastor Don, how you doing? We're doing great. Very good, very good. Uh, I just want to check on you. How are you doing? Well, you know, I'm going through these treatments, and uh, it's 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 intense, and I can tell you, it's tough. I'm yeah, seven treatments out of sixty, and uh, fifty-three to go. Fifty-three to go. <laughs> how long is it going to take? I mean, are we talking about a few months? months? It's three months. It's three months every day. Three months. Okay. Three months. Three months. Yeah. Are you still in Florida? Are you still yeah, in Florida? Yeah. That's where the treatments are being done, yes. Okay. Uh, how far are you from the town of Winter Haven? I have no idea. Okay. My mom lives down there, and I'm uh, most of my whole family. Yeah. The Florida version of the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one with college. <laughs> Uh, I, no, I came in late. I just saw Heidi's uh, uh, message on my uh, uh, email account, and I just want to pop my head in and uh, just check in on you because I did want to call and see how you're doing yeah. and uh, let you know Kathy and I are praying for you. We love you, and hopefully one day we'll see each other in person, maybe uh, the uh, uh, conference of the future. I'll be back up in Indiana later this year and um, settling in uh, back in Indiana again. Uh, but we're, we're, while we're doing the treatments, we're, of course, continuing to preach the gospel online and, and, and do everything we can, as well as I'm uh, involved in preaching uh, in the local church down here. At the, Good deal. Yeah, at the Good Freedom Fellowship, which is a, a revival spirit. I prophesied Sunday. It was so powerful. The Lord moved so powerful in that church. They were on fire. Uh, there's a revival going to break loose. The pastor proclaimed it. Um, and I'll be involved in that. So, yeah. Our, our, our pastor up here is uh, emphasizing evangelism and revival and uh, prayer for the area. And, uh, you know, just uh, pretty much in line with what y'all are doing down there, I, I don't I don't doubt. Yeah, that's right. It's a global, it's global. I mean, it has to be. Be, it's the end time harvest. Yes, coming. and uh I mean, to the point, like I said, since uh, since January, since 2021, there's, you know, we've been seeing so many souls get saved online. Pastor Sammy in India has been seeing souls being reaped in the harvest over there in the villages of India. He's been just going from village to village to village and sending um, so many pictures back of so many souls being saved in India. So it is a global harvest that's been taking place right now. Pastor Melvin here in Freedom Fellowship uh, Church here in, in Florida is just on fire as well. So uh, it is every, every everything is just on fire right now for the end time harvest. It's it's amazing. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, on a side note, our, our uh, mayor up here in Muskogee, is a pastor and uh every other week sometimes he'll take the the council and anybody wants to join them downtown for a uh, citywide prayer meeting and we're we're very very thankful for that and did our uh, pastors meeting uh every week uh, we are we're very grateful to have him uh mayor coleman praise and, god uh, hopefully yeah. he's more christian in leadership positions uh, uh, across America, just like Daniel Heidi was in a leadership position, even when the kingdom he was in was uh, was blasphemous. The king was blasphemous, right? You know, that's we why we the governor too. Yeah, so this is why it's so important mm -hmm. that no matter who's on the little thrones, mm -hmm. it's who's on the big throne. So, so. Because so many people are devastated and they think that the person who may be sitting in a uh, position is going to completely dictate their life. Look, they can affect us, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. but 
God controls my steps. I'm a, my steps are ordered by the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay, I might have to sidestep a few things, you know, a stumble. I might have to jump over a few things, or maybe pray a few mountains out of the way. But the the, the purpose, the direction that God has given us is directed by God, and He will. He is a provider. He will blast a hole through a mountain if He has to. You know, yep. to get to where we need to go. And I'm not well, gonna... remember all those years ago, everybody thought the communist wall was never collapse. And one little pastor in Romania brought down the entire communist government in like two weeks. Yeah. And everyone else just started saying, no, we're not going to obey. We're not going to obey. Next thing you know, the dictator's out and they're free. Kind you know, uh, Dimitri Dudeman, which, you know, Heidi, we met his grandsons, uh, uh, the Bodia boys, uh, mm-hmm. Michael and uh, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Dimitri Dudeman was a tremendous man of God from Romania, as you speak of Romania. And of course, that was, they were under the Iron Curtain. They were under the communist control, Soviet control. And uh, Christianity was illegal. They yeah. confiscated Bibles, it burned down churches, it murdered pastors. Ceausescu was known as Dracula. Yeah. And he was, he was arrested. Evil, evil man. Dimitri Dudeman was arrested. And they decided to execute him. They put him in a electric chair. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the man who pu- pushed the lever, the, the, the current came back and electrocuted him. Mm. And Dudeman was survived. Right. So well, later they tried a second time to execute him by electric again. Mm-hmm. And when they pushed the lever, it, ex- it electrocuted four or five men in their chamber it's an amazing and he testimony. walked away and you know what they did they said the president we should said, have them back on said send this guy to america mm-hmm. don't try to kill him again just get rid of him mm-hmm. send him to america mm-hmm. and he came to america and uh began yeah. a great well, evangelistic ministry over here in america we've had well, Michael the, the director the director of uh voice of the martyrs ricardo Rembrandt. he was from romania too and uh his headquarters is up here, a few miles up the road. There's some of the most powerful Christians in the last 100 years have come out of Romania. I mean, there's unbelievable prayer warriors and prophecies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we know, um, our, our mission board opened a seminary over in uh, Bucharest or somewhere a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Someone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I seen in the YouTube somebody's concerned that we should have we should make sure that everybody prays, and so perhaps they're not aware of our twenty four seven prayer global prayer uh, group that we have that Melissa heads up. Um, and so if you if you want to join our prayer group, we have a prayer group that Melissa uh, does. She organizes, and we have twenty four seven prayer going on. People are praying every hour, every hour on the hour. hour, several people deep. And uh, we have that prayer group going on all the time. Also, we have at our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Mm-hmm. You can go and put your prayer request, post it on the prayer wall. Mm-hmm. And what Miss Miss ZD then goes through and identifies these every day. And if there's uh, to protect people's um Confidentiality. confidentiality we don't mm-hmm. give the last names out mm-hmm. you know we protect the identity of people who may be ill or mm-hmm. whatever the situation is and she reposts it then on the prayer wall with, so that everyone can see it and people come and pray daily and there's a lot of i know pastor wolverton and mm-hmm. we got a lot of folks that check that every day multiple times a day mm-hmm. i think pastor wolverton checks it three times a day mm-hmm. and they pray for <clears throat> aids on the prayer wall mm-hmm. so i i think i agree with this person that just texted whoever that was that mm-hmm. we need to pray yeah. absolutely yes prayer is the key and we have rachel's heart right now we have a, a very critical situation of a 16 year old little baby a 16 day old little baby 16 days old her name is sally lynn that we've all been praying for and then of course we have gabrielle who's seven months old i believe just had his second open heart surgery um, and uh, his mom just posted for him because uh, I think it was a week ago he had his second open heart, um, which we had all gathered. Um, we had anointed him and prayed for him. When we were in our basement that, that uh, for last summer, last summer, um, we prayed for him. 
but um, also he the, had his open heart surgery a week ago. So his name is Gabrielle. So his mother asked uh, again, would we pray for him still? He's never been able to come home. He's been in the hospital since seven months uh, all this time. He's been in very serious he's been, condition. He's, been, he's seven months old and he's never left the hospital. But yes, through the hand of Gabrielle. God, through the hand of God, he's still there. And, mm -hmm. and oh, by the way, we've been praying for little James who, Mm -hmm. had uh he had cancer out there in san diego and uh, oh james is doing james good. is doing great he looks he's, great he's been he's cured awesome. <laughs> he's healed he's mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. he's alive and mm -hmm. thriving mm -hmm. and you know also though we've been praying here in the last few days mm -hmm. for uh the ladies brandon and and uh and her daughters because her niece i want to say it's her niece it's her cousin's her daughter cousin's daughter and her two children were murdered in mm -hmm. Missouri, and then mm -hmm. the, and the shooter then took his own life. Mm -hmm. Very and, uh, sad. Horrific. Mm -hmm. And there was a wonderful, uh, a really, really wonderful woman, and, and she was murdered with her two kids. Mm -hmm. Very um, sad situation. So we're praying for that family and going mm -hmm. through all that. But there's, that's just a few things that's popping in my head here in the last... So yeah, yeah there's a thank you for praying all you guys that your prayer warriors out there we could Heidi and I can't keep up with all of it mm -hmm. so it takes it mm -hmm. it takes everybody right and we have Alice who does a special she, I call her my intensive care her and Suzanne they do the intensive care as far as if you're having surgery they uh they keep a close check on anybody who's having surgery and follow up with everybody who's having surgery that day and keep following up with you and make sure you get through surgery okay like Eva's mother uh, Phyllis has been um, having she had surgery then she's had several complications and she's in the hospital and they've been praying with her and, and also you know, cats you know answers the phone during the day during the day, week uh, mm -hmm. during the day and I know she deals with everything mm -hmm. she, you know, she's the like the first line of defense and mm -hmm. and the first line of <laughs> what's happening and what's coming her way. And mm -hmm. she has, she prays with people on the spot or, mm -hmm. or she coordinates it and sends it to the right areas for whatever the need might be. And of course, all the people involved in the prayer blankets, right? So, uh, you know, in the prayer cloth, I mean, all these blanket just ladies, no way that we could do anything. And all these moderators that are all your help are involved in all this. And then, and then Cindy <laughs> and Marcus that are, and Tanya that are praying a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, with the blankets as well, and and it just goes Pastor on Paul on and on and Pastor on. Pastor Paul, yeah, I was wondering how your father is doing. Dad's doing good. He'll be eighty-five. Matter we fact, we are going to have an eighty-fifth birthday, birthday party. party. So maybe, oh, good. maybe we could do a card shower for him. That would be fun. That yeah. would be great. Mm -hmm. We should put that his address up on the screen. Oh, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. You're just Debbie. joining us. Hi. You know, I love it when Debbie Bartolo shows up <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. because uh, she's always so cheerful and happy. And, uh, uh, and we miss you. Yeah. We got to get together again. When are they ever going to let us come together again? Are they ever going to let us come together? <laughs> hey, Pastor. Right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, Debbie, thank you for hey, your Pastor. faith. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. This is Michelle. Um, how does somebody get the will back? Say, you know, somebody's lost their, uh, after being so badly hurt and, you know, been through so many hits in life and they love God with all their heart, but they have, just don't have it to fight back anymore. What do you do when something like that get when you're so badly burnt out that you you don't know what to do and you're crying out to God to, to change it? You don't and you're battling yourself even to, to finish yeah. the race. How yeah. do you get past that? Well, David was in the same boat when he came back to Ziglag and after they had taken his wife, all the guys' wives and children and stole them. Uh, they were just they lost. These guys just fainted, basically. It's like all hope was lost. And David even went away, kind of just got off to himself. And in, the Bible said encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, I reckon, I would think he sang. He prayed and he sang. Remember, he was a psalmist. Mm -hmm. He could play the harp and saw the, 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 the evil spirit that would be around Saul, the depression, would go away and would lift. I think, you know, that you sometimes just get off to yourself and maybe play a good good gospel music, pr do some praying, and just start, you know, lifting your hands and just start praising the Lord. And the Bible tells you that uh, cast off that spirit of heaviness and you can put on the garment of praise. Amen. 
And sometimes we just got to do that. Doesn't mean all of our problems are solved. Beauty for ashes. Yeah, but he'll give us beauty for ashes. He'll give us mm-hmm. uh, joy where there's been mourning. Amen. We, mourning may last through the, I mean, joy, uh, sorrow may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, yeah. you can Thank do it. you. Yep. And you're wonderful. We're surrounded by all of us. So there's strength in numbers. Amen. And you come here every time, Michelle. Yeah, you're faithful. So that's awesome. Amen. I, I was just going to say one thing is, uh, you know, I've been through a lot. And there was a surgery I had at 29 that they didn't think I was going to live through. And all I can t- know is that I, I told my friend that who, who went through a flood in he, you know, Houston when Harvey hit. And I said, no, ba- no matter how bad it gets... It, once you're through it, it's so much better on the other side. If you just Amen. get to the other side. Amen. I mean, that's Debbie, right? That's yep. Debbie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Debbie, that's, <laughs> you know, Debbie went to uh, Israel with us. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember her saying it was one of the things she really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And she uh, has really got come through a lot physically and, and uh, emotionally. And she's, uh, very powerful in her faith. And that's true there for all are. of us. You know, there mm-hmm. she is. That's mm-hmm. true for all of us. Mm-hmm. You Sometimes you just got to tell the devil, look, 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 I'm going to run you over in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I'm doing this thing. Uh, uh, God's with me. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes I just serve, serve uh, notice on the devil. You know, mm-hmm. sort of like if an officer comes up to someone's house and serves notice, mm-hmm. I serve notice on the devil. Oh, by the way, devil, I'm headed in this direction and I'm going in the name of Jesus. I was given a direct order. And uh, what you going to do about it? Because I'm going to run all over, you You know, and I'm, it ain't you. Mm-hmm. It's your set. You're saying you're going in the it's not by our might nor by our power, but by his spirit. Thus saith the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, it was only Jesus that got me through all everything I've been through. It was never me. It, right. And I, I, I need to correct that. It was never me that got through it. It was only Jesus in me that that did it. That's exactly. I didn't have the strength right. to do it. To him that we live, move, and have our very being. Amen. And That's another way. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Another way of overcoming that is also uh, helping somebody. Pastor Howard. When you help somebody, there we go. Pastor God Howard. will fill you full of joy for for just mm-hmm. reaching out to somebody in his name you just and made my will... day pastor you just made my day when i can see a palm tree and the ocean yeah uh, you just made... i'm sitting in my house right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you're right if you help someone you know it, it, then it gets the focus off of you and the, and and what we're going through and we always can see someone else that needs Maybe in worse shape than we are, okay? And, and Yes, yes. Well, Pastor, uh, the thing is, I did that a number of times. I did get the victory, and because you know my background of what happened, yeah. and it's just I haven't been able to get past certain things, especially physically. It's it's put a toll on me, and it's, it's just hard. It's like I'm constantly, you know, fighting myself, trying to do the Father's will, and it's so frustrating, right. and, um, yeah. you know. But you're doing it, Michelle. You're here. Yep. You're here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm never giving up. I'm never giving up. But I just get so. I don't know how to do it. I just keep praying. So, Father, how am I supposed to get? Because I know the last time I get up, I will stand, stay up. Because I what I've gone through and got to the the core has been dealt with everything. But it's like the the lingering tough stuff that I learned to cope with is what still hangs on, and that's kind of learning how to change that coping mechanism or thing alone you know, with the Lord is not easy because I'm in a total isolated situation, you know, which is not a bad thing for me right now. It's just hard. It's hard. And I'm just going to be honest. I've been trying to be quiet and stay to myself and, you know, let the Lord do what he wants to do. But it's just, I don't know how to explain it. I'm trying really hard. I want to finish the father's will. I don't know quite what the issue um, or why I'm having such a hard time doing it. Because Maybe I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I tried to figure it out. I don't know why I had such a struggle. Maybe it's just learning to trust him more than I've ever trusted before. I don't know what it is because I did it before. I walked in major anointing, everything. It's like, okay, Lord, how am I supposed to get back there? You know, I don't know. I don't know how, you know. Sometimes well, it's well, just well, a choice. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. Well, oh, I said sometimes it's just a choice. There's times that I'm down. I have to choose to be happy. Yeah, and I have to choose to 
And, and Pastor's right. When you start singing praises, there's God honors that because you're praising God, and and He's in the midst of those praises, Amen. and He will bring peace to you, Amen. even in the midst of all the troubles. Amen. 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 Yeah, I felt that, and then I'll, then I'll like slip away again, and then it comes. It's like this battle. You know, be there, and, and then I slip away, and it's my own fault on some things. I've been through kind of things I've made mistakes for, but I'm not purposely trying to do it against the Lord. And I know that I told Him that He knows that. And I'm not trying to to do anything against Him. You know, I'm I'm going to get there. Warfare. Sorry, just, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> you don't even know. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, God you, bless you. Thank you. No, I do know, and and it's spiritual warfare. And you need to bind that spirit. I found her. I know where to bound. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> anyway, thank one you. One thing. One thing I found that helped me that maybe will help you, Michelle, is when I went through my cancer. I kept telling myself, "God didn't get me this far in my life just to turn His back on me now." And that's what Amen, you need to that. tell yourself. He's Thank, not yeah. going to get you this far and then turn his back on you. And he keeps right. telling me that. That's what's so hilarious. Like, keep hearing him just constantly encouraging me. But I'll sit there and like, Lord, I don't know what the problem is. You know, I love you. <laughs> and I know it gets deep with me. I know it's a deep thing, but it's just, it's not easy. It's all I can say. And, um, but I am coming through it. It's just, I don't even mean, I didn't mean to talk about myself. Sorry. It's just, I, I had that question to ask you guys for a long time. And um, anyway, I didn't want to discourage what already has been done to, you know, because a lot of people need to know about it. You know what I'm saying? But I left alone that God must have a reason. So I just left it, let it be, you know, and just trusting him to get there. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, well, I would say get your eyes off the world and keep your eyes focused on Christ. Because if you look at this world, it's depressing. Oh, I know. <laughs> we live in a falling world. And we need to just keep focused and keep running for the race to the prize. And that prize is Jesus Christ. Most yeah. people have a motivation of something. I've had everything taken from me. I mean, they made sure of this. Sorry, I'm not trying to cry. No. They're very good. They're very good. I say you. He didn't take God from you. No. Oh, That's for sure. He didn't take Jesus from you. Amen. Yeah, but when you get I hope this in Jesus. My hope is in Jesus that he's coming back and he's going to give me a brand new body. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> I, I hope that, that soon. <laughs> June, so how have you been doing, June? It's so good to hear from you. Oh, well, I have a lot of health issues, too. And one, one time you guys sent me this cross I keep on my walker. And I have a hard time walking this cross here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold that up. Wait, no. There, in front of your camera. There it is. Okay, yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. And I keep it on my walker. And me and Jesus, we walk together and we walk on top of the water. There you go. Oh, I can, yeah. I can preach on that. I can preach we on don't that. Fall in, and I don't fall in the water like Peter did. I walk on top of the water. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus is with me. Amen. He loves me. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to get a brand new body someday. You and me no both. more epilepsy, no more diabetes, no more cancer, no more arthritis. Praise the Lord. He's coming. God. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I like Amen. to whip up on the devil. when uh, Every time Satan likes to remind me of my uh, future, or of my past, I turn it around on him. And remind him of his future. And when I, because when I read the book of Revelation, if there's a word that uh, that I need to speak against Satan, oh, I let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's what you got to do: speak the word of God. You know, that's the sword. That's the weapon of our warfare. We can use the word on him and uh, yeah. praise God. Amen. I was talking. To my, I was talking to my mom uh, a few days ago. And I told I had told her that it's a lot easier to do what is right, but it takes up so much energy and focus and time to do what is evil because you know it's just why won't why would why would you want to put yourself through that kind of trouble when you when you know good and well that you're going to lose and you have to repent from it, but you know it takes so much uh, so so less of energy and time to do what is right. Because you know, right now I'm I'm trying to keep my eyes upon the Lord God and yeah. focus upon the Word 
And that's what I'm doing. I'm not like everybody else. I'm trying to, you know, I, you know, I make a choice every time I get up. I, uh, um, I, I mean, I listen to the Christian station when I go to sleep, wake and sleep with it on all night. I wake up listening to it. But you know what, Brother Paul and Sister Heidi and everybody else is listening. Um, every time I pray for healing for certain for people. I always go to the scripture of Isaiah chapter uh, 53, verse 5, where it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Pastor Paul, I, I don't want to cut in. Sorry about that. Um, Last week, I told Heidi about a song that I think you should record by Tyler Booth called Mary's Arms. Have you got a chance to listen to it? I have not. Mary's Arms. I have not had a chance to listen to it, but I will. Let me write that down right here. Mary. I think you'll enjoy that one. I remember Heidi telling me about that, but I have not taken the time to listen. So let me write Tyler that. Booth. Tyler He's on Booth. Amazon. You can find him on YouTube. I'll find him. Tyler Booth. Okay. All right, I'll check it out. All right. Appreciate it. All right, darling. Yeah. I've uh I'm running out of gas. Can I say something real quick, like? Sure. It's a joy to be on here tonight and to hear everyone exhorting each other. Amen. The Bible says not to forsake ourselves to assembling together, but he says to exhort one another. So Amen. that's what church is all about. Amen. So we are the church. Uh, some there's there's a the classes are going on. There's some classes going on tomorrow, uh, and I think also is tomorrow Wednesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Classes going on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. All right, Pastor Marcus. That's correct. <laughs> Mine's every two weeks, and and Shelley's is on Thursdays, and she's uh, yeah, it, it's it's hammering away. Amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, it's you know what this has been good. I yeah. mean, uh, the, these folks are on fire. You all are on fire. This is amazing online church. Getting gooder and gooder, and then uh, getting gooder and gooder. Yeah. We just talked to uh, Jeannie um, Jeannie Moore from uh, Hear the Watchman, and Pastor mm-hmm. Paul just signed up for Discerning Minds. Yeah. On March twenty sixth through twenty eighth. So. Um, I know that uh, Jeannie will have more about that at hearthewatchman.com. So, yeah, it's going to be really good. I'm going to be speaking about, uh, look, we're dealing with a lot of things that's hitting the earth, the global reset, the, the uh, pandemic, mm-hmm. uh, spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't remember. There's several categories. But really, it's about how to discern your way through this. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to have that supernatural intelligence instead of artificial intelligence. But mm-hmm. the Bible gives us a clue. It says, says that uh, you, know, you put on the helmet of salvation, okay? Also, you're to have the mind of Christ. Uh, and uh, we're, not conf- you know, we're not conformed to this world, but we've been transformed by the renewing of our mind. Right. And, you know, I'm going through these... Uh, 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 Treatments. Yeah, you're getting renewed. You're getting my, renewed. My mind's getting renewed every day. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so it's in the word. I mean, you know, I guess what it's really it's one thing is I do get 20 minutes out of these two hour treatment where I can just listen to the word of God. Amen. And uh, and uh, it's really amazing because you just feed you know you feed on that. That's one of the things I get to do. But. I've got to say this, uh, brother Paul and sister Heidi. Every time I see you. Y'all got a supernatural glow of Almighty God upon you. I can see it through those cameras. Both she of does. She What's Trump does. does. I'm just getting the. I'm getting the reflection. I'm sort of like the you know the moon off the sun. <laughs> well, I tell you, every time you read the Word of the Living God, you will get it because God's Word says He will renew our. He renew. He renews our. Uh, we have to. Let's just say we have to keep our minds on God. Yeah. But God's mercies is renewed every single day. And brother, you too have got the glow. Well, mm-hmm. all of you do. Praise God. All of you Praise do. Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, I'll be back mm-hmm. tomorrow. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be a guest on, um, um, what am I doing? Tomorrow night? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, getting ready? Oh yeah, I'm on uh, getting ready, which is mm-hmm. only on their fa- they're only on their website mm-hmm. uh, since they got blocked. Yeah, but I'll be co-hosting that tomorrow night, and then Thursday night, I'll be back with uh, Mike around the world. Mike from yes. around the world. Oh yeah, there we go. <coughs> hey, there was 90 people <coughs> that gave, came to Christ last Thursday night, yes. and another 30 on Sunday Praise night. The Lord, and you know. God is speaking to hearts out there, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going. We're going to get as many of them to Christ as we can. He's coming sh- shorter. He's coming sooner than he said. Okay, Amen. he's coming sooner than he Amen. said. We better be ready. Amen. And uh, right here, uh, Daniel says it the best: God, in whose hand thy breath is, in whose all are all thy ways, hast thou glorified. That we we. Our breath is in, the next breath that we take is all about God. So we can't do anything without God giving us our very next breath. Amen. And then that's mm-hmm. it, you know. So Amen. each and every one of us, that's we don't have anything. We just have the next breath that God is choosing to give us. Pastor Father, why don't you dismiss us from this powerful Bible study and, and worship and fellowship tonight? Pastor Farley, can you hear me? Yeah, I just had to unmute. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, go right, right. Father God, we come to you with grateful hearts and just giving you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, we want to thank you for this Bible study, for this book of Daniel. Lord, it uh, pertains to our world today. And uh, Father, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to give you the glory in all that we do in jesus name we pray amen Amen. 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 thank you all for being here with us thank you all at (laughs) youtube yes we have debbie here and we have miss leanne here because uh leanne's been down here um with us so you guys keep praying for leanne as she's dealing with everything from where her dad passed away so uh we, Did I miss it? I, I thought it was starting at this time. Does it start an hour earlier? Starts it's, at six. It started at six. I don't know who's saying that. That's Debbie. Debbie. No. Okay. I know, but okay. Well, it was six Eastern. Oh, six Eastern. Oh, that's okay. I missed it. Every Tuesday night, six yeah, Eastern. Six Eastern. Yeah. 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 Oh man, I tried so hard. I was looking at the clock and I kept on looking at the clock, waiting for six o'clock, and then I, I missed it. I'm so sorry. That's all right. We still got to see a little bit of you. Yep. Yeah. I'll be here back next. I'll be back on time next week. Okay. Okay, okay Debbie. All right. We love you guys. Are you serious? I'm a very blessed day, and I'm having a very best sweet sleep tonight. All Thank right. Thank you. Thank you. God You're bless welcome. you. Love you. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you all. Brock, are you there? Wait. Brock's... Uh, I want to encourage also, if you would need a Bible, I'd love to send you one for free. Just use this email, MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. We will send you a Bible for free. So we're anointing prayer cloths. We'll send those to you for free. And if somebody's very, very ill and we need to get them a blanket, we'll anoint it with oil, we'll pray over it, and we'll send it to them for free and believe God for a miracle. And, and let me just tell you something. If you're going going through cancer and you want a chemo cap we'll give that to you for free as well with your radiation or chemo guys some of you may want to give your your uh, tithe and offering you might have missed it yesterday go to paulbegleyprophecy.com that's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com and you can give your tithe your offering maybe a special donation you feel like giving today also you can text give just pick up your phone and text the word give to to that number on the screen, 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. And you can text the word give and, and be a blessing to the kingdom of God and winning souls to the Lord. Also, another way is just write me. Would you just sit down, put a check or money order in the mail, put a nice little letter in there, a note, a prayer request, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Send it to Paul Begley Prophecy. That's Paul 
Weekly Prophecy, 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That's 1048-B for the blessings, Sagamore Parkway West, Box 33, Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. That's West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Or pick up the phone right now and call. You can give your offering right over the phone or you could place an order for coffee or some of the silver products. Do it now. On February 5th and 6th, 2021, we gathered doctors, scientists, investigative journalists, military intelligence experts, and Bible scholars for one of the most important webinars of our time, The Virus, Vaccines, Victims, and Victory. We examined the vulnerabilities of the population and explored the verifiable evidence of what's really going on. You can see all these discussions in a DVD set called The Virus, Vaccines, Victims, and Victory. Get it today at paulbakeleyprophecy.com. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.